just going to go straight to questions for the players. Uh, for Jameer, uh, can you take us through that moment at the end of the game? Obviously, you shared a, a moment with Coach and then embracing all the guys on the bench. Uh, what was going through your mind at that point? Uh, really just reflecting on the year. Um, and I feel like uh, we had a great year and, you know, just proud of this group overall. So uh, just reflect on it. It was a lot of emotions at the time, but I was really just reflecting on the moment and uh, the year that we've had. For Juju, um, obviously a lot of development we've seen from you throughout the year. Can you kind of take us through what this year has meant for you in terms of building for the future? Um, yes, um, I feel like this year was just like a stepping stone for me and the the, the organization overall, you know, a lot of new guys, a lot of the new staff in coming in, and I feel like it's just a good building block to what's, what's to come, really. Um, just grateful to have a group like this to, like, just start off with and be a part of. Okay, we're going to go to Zoom with Ross O'Keefe. Dan Tortora. Yeah, for the student athletes at Dan Tortora, wake up call DT.com. I know that this is a, a tough feeling right now for you, but just what you could say about the success of this season and how you pushed the number one overall seed through a good portion of this game. And, and coach, I'd love to get your thoughts on that as well. Uh, I mean, I would just say that, you know, it was, they just got the best of us tonight. Um, I feel like we fought hard. Uh, I feel like the score doesn't really uh, reflect on how hard we've played tonight. But I feel like I'm just proud of this group. Um, um, I wouldn't want to go to war with anybody else. So um, I'm just proud of the guys. And you know, I love them. Chris Heidel. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Herbertson Radio in Baltimore. Sorry for the tough loss uh, tonight, guys. This question is for Julian. Julian, you were in foul trouble real, really early in the game. So what did you do to keep your mindset from not getting, you know, I know you, you had to foul out, but what did you keep yourself mindset in that game to keep yourself focused? You know, um, early in the year, I had the same issues, um, foul trouble. Um, the mindset I try to go into when, when I'm in the game is just keep the same energy. Don't don't lose any focus or don't get down to myself and keep playing the game. The same, keep playing my game. and. Um, I feel like not if I don't shy away from contact or physicality, and then I'll be good. Um, when I, I feel like when I get fouls, I gotta stick, keep the same physicality and, and just keep playing. I understand that just comes with it, and, and leave, just leave some short, just leave some plays alone, like a short, over, like a over the back call, and like just don't gamble, don't swipe down on some things, and just gotta learn from that and, and build on. Up front. Jameer, you made the decision after last season to come play for your hometown school. What are you going to remember most about putting on that Maryland jersey this season? Uh, you know, just just representing Maryland. Um, you know, just a great university, and you know, our fan base has been has been you know rocking with us all year. So um, I wouldn't want to go to war with anybody else. So um, I felt like it was a great decision, um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Nick Alvarez, AL.com. Jameer, how frustrating it can be to drive inside and kind of get caught up in the length that Alabama has on defense? Yeah, no, they're very um, athletic. And, you know, that's just, um, you know, something to work on, something to learn from, um, you know, just playing on two feet and, you know, just uh, making better decisions in the lane. But, you know, they're very talented. Um, they're very uh, athletic. And, you know, they challenge every shot. So I feel like they did a good job of protecting the room. Right here. Mike Adula, Tuscaloosa News. For Julian, uh, you were not the most popular guy out there tonight with all the Alabama fans in attendance. What was that like for you, knowing that you were getting booed heavily every time you touched the ball? Did that kind of fire you up, or uh, was it just like another road game for you? Yeah, it's pretty much just like another road game. Um, playing in the Big Ten, I'm kind of used to stuff like that, kind of used to hard crowds. And I typically don't really, like, it typically is on them type things out and, and focus on the win. Okay, players are dismissed. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired. Can we, can we get changed? <laughs> I appreciate that.
<laughs> okay, we'll start in the front with these two. Coach, kind of a cliche question, but what was the message to the team after the game tonight? Um, it, it was simple. You know, I, I told these guys, you know, I think today's March 18th. I got hired on March 21st to kind of – I told them that, you know, these guys had, had really done an unbelievable job of coming together and turning this program into what, you know, getting it going in the right direction. And it was, it was done with an unbelievable attitude. It was done with an unbelievable work ethic. And I was just extremely proud of them. They made this by far my best coaching year I've ever had. You know, it's, it's very difficult to move your family. It's very difficult to, to leave someplace that you, you love very much and come to a new place. And these guys made this year absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I was just, I told them I was, I was proud of them. I loved them and I, I said, thank you. Off that point, um, how did this year kind of shape with your expectations from when you first accepted the job and now that you're a year later, um, what would your thoughts be on, on where Maryland basketball is compared to what you thought it was when, when you came in? Yeah, I mean, we're in the second round of the NCAA tournament in 353 days. Um, it's a good first step. I mean, we have, we, have, we have a lot more steps that we need to take as a program, and we will get there. But like I said, if you had told me I'd be playing in the second round, inheriting five guys on the roster, I would have told you you're nuts, especially you since you're from Long Island. Kevin, uh, Kevin just how, how difficult was it to get a good shot? You were playing great half-court defense, but it was very difficult to get a, a good shot against those guys, their length. How, how tough is that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the reason why they're, they're second in Ken Palm in three-point field goal defense, and I think they're first or third in overall field goal defense. They have a very simple game plan, which works. They just funnel everything into the big guy, and, you know, they take away the, the strong side and, and, the, and the kicks. Um, and they do a great job of it. They use their length tremendously. Um, you know, it's we, we didn't get them moving side to side enough. You know, we we tried to slow it down, um, and we just were not built to slow it down yet. And so that kind of hurt us a little bit. But you know, 28-23 at halftime, and, and we didn't play overly well. Uh, and ha not having Juju out there, you know, some of those foul calls, you know, will make you make you wonder um, so I mean if, I don't think if he gets him if he doesn't get in foul trouble and they don't take him out of the game then I think the game's different Kevin coming into this game you talked about being very familiar with Javon Quinterly just what kind of growth have you seen from him from when you played against him when he was at Nova and just what made him so challenging to stop tonight I offered Javon Quinterly a scholarship when he's in ninth grade I've known Javon since he was in ninth grade I've watched him every second of the way um, I probably watch more high school games of Javon Quinley than I have anybody else. To see him turn into the player that he's turning into and to see what he went through early in his college career and now see him blossoming and having confidence. And um, he's got the swagger that he had in high school back. Um, to be perfectly honest, it, it, he killed us tonight, but I'm, I'm – I'm really happy for Javon Cornelly. He's a terrific young man. If you know him and you know his family and you know his background, um, to see him blossom into this player, um, I'm proud of him. I really am. I think it, I think it's phenomenal. Uh, Kevin, can you maybe elaborate on on Reese's absence in in the first half and just if it felt like when you have a post player that can that Betty Ako has to defend. It, Changes, changes their defense a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, the, the second foul call was uh, his first foul was a foul, but the second foul call was mysterious, and even the third one. I, you know, I've played with I've played him with two fouls all year. Um, you know, you can't call that second foul not in an NCAA tournament game. That's just my feeling on it. I think I think it was a horrible call, and I thought it changed the outcome of the game. 
I can elaborate a lot on it, but I'll probably get in a lot of trouble. So, I mean, I can go with that much trouble, or you want me to go in this much trouble? Because I don't, I mean, it's, it's the second call was a terrible foul call. And you can't take a best player out of the game when the game was physical as it was. And it was a horrible call. It, it changed our whole game plan. We were going to pound it inside, pound it inside. I mean, we, that's what we've been doing for the last two months of the season. We've, we've played through Julian. We've played at the high post through Julian. We've played down low through Julian. Um, he draws fouls. He draws double teams. I mean, he plays. I don't know where minutes are in this, on this stat sheet. This is like, the, this, is, this might be worse than that foul call. Next one. So he plays 21 minutes and he's minus four. So that just tells you how valuable he was uh, to this game. So, um, you know, I, I will continue to play him with two fouls because I trust him. Um, but even, even the third foul was like, you know, I almost think like you got to be looking at him and put him on the bench. That's how I feel. Very back. Brennan Quinn with The Athletic. Uh, Kevin, I think it was like a 31 possession game in the first half, which you probably felt pretty good about um, on pace for 62. Like, how I, – I, I I'm not sure what it ended up as, but, like, how, how difficult is it to do that for 40 minutes against that group when they kind of come in waves? I, you know, to be honest, I think, it, I think you're going to have to play that way to beat them. Uh, you know, I don't I, – I watch Houston. I think Houston's got the defense – that they can get up and down, and they have the one-on-one -on -one players that can probably play with them. I think I think Mick. Did UCLA win? I think Mick. Mick has the talent that can run up and down with them a little bit. Um, I just they have, you know, they, they're coming off the bench, you know, with, with seven, seven, one, six, eleven, six, eight. You know, um, Jaden Bradley's an All-American. He's coming off the bench, so um, we knew we had to slow it up. It it's you know 28-23 if we had. Again, I think if we had Julian on the court, I would have liked to, liked where we where we were. I think we could have played that way the whole time if he, if he hadn't gotten in foul trouble. Last question right here. Thank you. Oh. That's why I like you. <laughs> Coach, what are you going to remember most about your first season at Maryland? And is there a moment this season that kind of sticks out to you among the rest? Um... What am I going to remember? What? I, I'm going to take away that I, that this was this was by far one, the best team I've ever I've ever had to coach. Again, it, moving your family, your family going through stuff, is is unbelievably hard. Leaving, I said again, leaving a place that you love and you help build. Um, this team for me made coaching really fun, and I enjoyed this. And you know, it sucks to lose, and I hate losing, but. Um, I'm proud of these guys. I'm proud of their effort. I'm proud of what they did. I'm proud of, um, you know, we had 3,000 people at our first game at Niagara, and we sold out eight, eight straight consecutive games. I mean, um, I'm proud of the way people look at Maryland basketball right now. It's because of these young men and the hard work they've done. So that's what I'll take away from it. It's okay. now 1 o'clock in the morning. So no newspapers getting in, no nothing. I don't know what we're doing here. You guys are like crazy, man. I'm getting on, I'm getting on a plane and going home. Thank you very much Thank for everything. You. You're a pleasure. No, no Zoom this time. No.